GIS stands for Geographical Information System. It is a tool which is useful as it can perform different types of analysis and present the results. GIS is a system of hardware, software, and procedures which is designed to support the capture, management, manipulation, analysis, modeling, and display of spatially referenced data for solving complex planning and management problems. Components include people, data, analysis, hardware, and software. Data types, sources, and resolution. Data types include vector data, which are features represented by points, lines, and polygons. Raster data, represented by grid cells or pixels, which contain data representing the information. Surface models and metadata, which is data about data. Clinics are point data, and they are circled in red on the map. Floodplains are line data, circled in purple. And sea level rise is area or polygon, circled in blue. Data sources include primary sources, where geological data is captured specifically for the use in GIS by direct measurements, and secondary sources, sources which are reused from earlier studies such as scanned maps. Next is data acquisition. One way data is captured is by remote sensing, where resolution is important. For example, spatial, spatial resolution, which is a measure of spatial detail of an object. Applicability to the ocean and use. GIS can be used in coastal, continental shelf, and deep ocean studies. Oceanographic GIS uses data distribution tools, mapping tools, and monitoring analysis tools in different disciplines. These include coastal zone assessment and management, ocean surface processes, marine geology and geomorphology, submerged habitats, marine oil spills, which we discuss later, climate change and sea level rise, deep ocean mapping, flooding, also to be discussed later, and for the tracking of cyclones, ships, and animals. A GIS case study, ESCOM, a non-oceanographic example of how GIS is used. So my mom is a GIS technician at Eskom, and this is what she had to say. The GIS system used at Eskom is Small World. It is used for the implementation of power lines where the data has been collected in the field, which is a primary data source. The data is implemented into Small World via coordinates, or DGN files. It allows for the precision of geographical coordinates, analysis of networks, search engines, and data set controllers. The data which is used is called data sets. It can be switched on and off as required, showing topographical, vector, and aerial displays. They use metadata, where attribute tables are displayed once geometry, which are things in Small World, are selected. An editor is opened, and all the data is displayed. This slide serves to make a comparison between the QGIS and ArcGIS softwares. QGIS is an open source software, whilst ArcGIS requires licensing. Due to this, QGIS is more accessible and can be considered better suited to small scale projects. However, QGIS has very few tools and runs quite slowly compared to ArcGIS. As we found when making these maps for the Western Cape flood zones, ArcGIS, which is shown on the right, cope better when adding multiple overlays and in general when presenting or visualizing the data. Due to the limitations of QGIS, all the maps that followed were made using ArcGIS unless otherwise stated. As Dana mentioned earlier, a number of different data sources can be incorporated into a GIS project, and these maps include point, line, and polygon data, with the ArcGIS map also including a digital surface model. World Ocean Atlas, or as we affectionately call it, our LEGO map. For this map, data was acquired from profile data from World Ocean Database. The database is built from a collection of objectively analyzed and quality controlled temperatures. Spatial data is being shown as vector point data. Here, a point represents the position of a feature. There is five degree resolution, where each dot represents a distance spanning that of five degrees. A resolution of one degree would have been better, as there would have been more data points or features, thus a clearer, more accurate map, as can be seen on the Python map. We also made the same map using a one degree resolution in ODB, and this also incorporates point data as we didn't use the deeper grading system. And as you can see on a one degree resolution, the data points overlap with one another and provide a clearer view of sea surface temperature. We also conducted a flood scenario study for the Western Cape. This is the same map made for the QGIS versus ArcGIS slide, and it's just a different interpretation of the data. This plot was made using a digital surface model with a 10 meter spatial resolution. Different arguments were formed using the raster calculator tool to visualize various flood scenarios, namely, namely flood levels of three, five, and 10 meters. The shading of the flood levels in red, orange, and green indicate the severity and extent of flooded areas, with areas shaded in red being the most likely to be affected by flooding. Additionally, the outlines of suburbs were included on this map to identify areas of concern. The creation of flood maps is vital in urban planning, as they can allow developers and policymakers to identify potential risk zones. The zones that are affected by flooding can be targeted for improved infrastructure, which would withstand flooding and extreme weather phenomenon. This map can also be used to determine areas that would not be affected by flooding, and these areas could be used to set up evacuation sites in the case of potential flooding scenarios occurring. The making of this map included the usage of a base map and the creation of buffers and metadata. We have mapped the marine protected areas and ranked them according to their status, as shown in the attribute table in the bottom right. We also manually added the oil rigs found in the Black Sea with their names and status of operation. The GSP Uranus oil rig was selected as a potential spill site. An uh, actual photo of this oil rig is shown in the top right. Buffers were created to mimic the potential spill zone of this oil rig. The buffer areas were selected on previous studies of the Black Sea, as well as the Minerva Symphony spill last year, which reached about 80 square kilometers and had a slick distance of 19 kilometers. As with the previous slide on the flood scenarios of Cape, the Western Cape, the probable scenario is shaded in red, the next most likely in orange, and the least probable scenario in green. As can be seen from this diagram, an oil spill from the select oil rig could affect a designated habitat MPA. An issue we ran into when creating this map was inclusion of superscripts in our buffer table shown beside the legend in the bottom left. 
In exporting the map, there appeared to be trouble in including special symbols, and we regard this as a limitation of ArcGIS. Our Western Cape map. The map shows marine protected areas, coastal biota, and dive sites along the western coast. Three different data sets were used to make this map. The marine protected areas are displayed according to their status and are depicted by cross hatching, stippling, and solid colors. Those which were not present in the Western Cape region were removed. Kelp and pelagic birds were included to show some coastal biota for those that are interested, and relevant images were shown alongside the map to show what one expects to see. We could have added more coastal biota features, but when trying to add more data to the map, an issue arose because the data files were moved to different folders, and when you try to access the map again in ArcMap to edit it, the map had disappeared. So in order to add more features, such as whale data, which can be seen in the top right-hand corner in pink, the files had to be moved back to the original folder, as the path to that folder had changed. This slide was made in ArcScene and shows the bathymetry and topography of the region situated between South America and Antarctica. The elevated regions are indicated in warmer colours, such as reds and yellows, whilst deeper regions that are located below surface level are coloured in purples and blues. The reds and yellows would represent continental land, whilst the blues and purples would indicate ocean basins. This map makes it quite easy to see where the continental shelves, ocean basins and islands lie in this region. However, a difficulty arose when creating this diagram, as adding specific contour lines such as 0 and 200 metres was not possible for the setup that we had. We were able to apply a contour overlay for every 1,000 meters. However, this doesn't really provide enough information on the region, as it was also difficult to apply actual values to the contour levels. As also seen from the insert on the top left, the scale seems to be slightly off compared to other projections of the region, and the lack of a scale bar from ArcScene makes it difficult for a general viewer to understand the map. This past week has brought to our attention some of the limitations of available GIS software, such as QGIS running slowly and ArcGIS only working on Windows operating systems. Although these limitations exist, we believe that GIS remains a useful tool for performing different types of spatial analyses and for presenting of results. We also believe that with future technological advances, these current limitations will be mitigated and the use of GIS will become more prominent and effective.